Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Hopefully you can uh, hear and see me okay from wherever you are logging on from. Um, this webinar is now live. Um, so obviously, thanks very much for joining. Um, this is going to be a, a webinar all around buying property over in Italy. Um, my name is Seb and I'm one of the account managers over here at Euro Overseas Home. Uh, today, we're going to be talking and asking questions to Manlio, um, who I've worked with personally for a number of years now. He is a real estate attorney and a senior partner at C Legal. He's assisted countless numbers of clients uh, that we've introduced them, but also uh, from elsewhere on their journeys of buying property over in Italy. Um, and today we're going to be looking at all the legal considerations you should think about when you're undertaking such a journey overseas in Italy. It's great to have so many of you here with us today, um, whether you are watching live or on demand. Uh, throughout the whole session, we do invite you to ask as many questions as possible. Um, try and test Manlio with his experience and knowledge in the questions tab, which you should find at the bottom right hand side of your screen. Um, throughout the session, we'll be answering those questions. If we can't get around to answering all of them, um, fear not, we will pass these questions over to Manlio and the team at Sea Legal uh, to follow up with you. And also we will post um, Manlio's contact details. So if you do have questions after the event, please do contact Manlio uh, directly. Um, before we start, uh, Manlio, do you mind just sort of giving a, I suppose, an introduction to yourself uh, yeah. and some introductions sure. about Sea Legal and, and how you help clients? Sure, sure. Thank you, Seb. Thank you for this nice and kind introduction. I'm Mario Gervasi, I'm senior partner at Legal. We are a boutique law firm, we are based in Rome, but we have also other office all over Italy. Uh, we are based also in Milan. We, we have also office in Tuscany, beautiful town of Lucca. Also another office in south of Italy, Puglia, which is Ostuni. Uh, other two offices in, uh, in Noto, in Sicily, and in Palermo, another beautiful region. And we assist basically international clients all over Italy and uh, through throughout the real estate purchase property uh, all over the country. Uh, we also assist clients uh, based on also company law, uh, Italian citizenship. We have also a lot of requests. We have a department here as legal. Uh, also for tax purposes or people that want to relocate to Italy also from the visa and uh, uh, point of view. Uh, also, we assist many clients also for the wills because it's also important when the international buyer purchases a property in Italy, uh, they arrange the will in accordance with the law, the national law of where they are based uh, and also in accordance with Italian law, which is sometimes there is contrast it can have uh, some uh, delay at the succession time for the family of the heirs of the uh, of the person who died. So we basically have uh, assist a lot of international clients, uh, mostly from the North Europe, uh, UK, and a lot from the United States of America. Uh, I am available to reply all the question about the real estate purchase property, which is becoming really, really. Uh, famous now after COVID, uh, we have an explosion of clients all over the world, basically. Great, Melio. Yeah, thanks very much for the introduction. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to, to come across and visit some of your offices. Um, it's been a long overdue. Oh. Um, yeah, lovely parts of Italy. Um, and obviously, it's great to have your, yes. your experience and, and knowledge um, covering those you know really important parts of the process. Um, Thank you um, to everyone so far that there's asked uh, some questions in the chat function. Um, Melia, I don't know if you can see them, but I'll, I'll start going through a couple that we have. Um, and then, you know, that if you want to sort of pick out any of you yourself, please feel free. Um, the first question we've, we've got here from Anne Kent um, is around buying a property. So she mentions if two people are buying a property and only one qualifies for the elective residency, is the 2% only on half of the property? question do you, do you know that there's something around there i suppose the elective residency at all manlio yes well basically um 
collective residency is based on the person who is qualified to get uh, the, the visa for collective residency. Uh, also, family members can join uh, and obtain the visa for collective residency if that is the same member of family. Uh, this depends to verify if the two people who will own the house will have this, they are on the same uh, family member, if they are family member, if they are uh, husband or wife, or there's the possibility if they are non family member, they are, they are to file two applications basically to the Italian consulate. Okay, great. So, I mean, if, um, for example, if with Anne, um, if it was just her that could, could receive the elective um, residency and the other buyer couldn't, is the 2% only relevant to half of that property price? Uh, no, no. If the visa for elective residency has another, another requirement. It's not based, based on the price of the property. Okay. Uh, it's completely another legal requirements, which are economic requirements. Uh, basically, also people that can show to Italian authorities uh, economic funds to send Italy without working. So it's not based on the. Uh, it's important to have to own or have the disponibility, uh, have a bid of the house, uh, but it's not based on the purchase price of the property. Okay. All right. Brilliant. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Milio. And also thanks, um, Anne, for, for your question. And um, I think given um, your, your circumstances, yeah, please do. Um, uh, get in touch with Manlio and his team uh, to go through it in a bit more detail with you. Um, but we've got another question here, Manlio, which um, is around having an offer accepted on a property from, from Paul Collings. Um, he says, what if your offer is accepted, you then pay the deposit and after receiving the documentation, you find out the property hasn't got all of its cert certificates slash approvals, resulting in the sale falling through. Would he get his deposit back? <sighs> it's, uh, it's a good question for uh, so yes you know, basically this is a, a question that because uh, the, if the offer has been accepted uh, it's basically uh, the contract became binding right. uh, if it has been paid also the deposit basically uh, the buyer cannot pull out from the contract if there are no legal reason basically uh, if decides to uh, not purchase the property anymore because he change uh, decision uh, change mind etc without yeah. any legal uh, uh, reason he, he will lose the deposit basically okay yeah, I, I think but we have uh, the property also in compliance with uh, the Italian law. If, if there is also uh, some responsibility from the buyer, from the seller, yeah, uh, this has to be verified. But I think that it's really important that you should, that's the buyer who uh, for this uh, for this uh, question seek, uh, seek uh, legal assistance, legal advice before make any kind of. Uh, communication to the to the to the seller yeah okay yeah thanks you i think you, you're right we, we i mean your overseas home would always um advise speaking to someone like manlio in before you start putting down deposits pool uh on the yes. basis that you know if, you, if you're not yes. the correct information or the correct insight from um someone around the certificates or approvals then yes basically in, in italy it's quite different from other countries in, in italy we suggest yeah. to uh, sign the uh, the offer that the state agent submitted to the to the buyer uh, but include some contingency clause uh, like for example to carry out due diligence uh, review all the documentation by a professional by a lawyer by a representative what's the knowledge of the legal documents and after the due diligence, pay the deposit. Yeah. At the moment of the positive outcome of the due diligence, after review of the documentation, after inspecting the property, after verifying the non liens, if the property has been built with uh, uh, all the building authorization, uh, the seller, the buyer can decide if purchase the property or not. Mm. Uh, otherwise, without any contingency clause, the proposal to purchase the offer becomes 
in a contract which is binding. He's obliged to pay deposit uh, and also sign the final closing. Otherwise, uh, they will lose the deposit. In Italy, it's really important to carry out due diligence because in, based on my experience, 70, also 80% of the property have some uh, issues from the legal point of view or from building authorization or small uh, works or small uh, uh, carry out without any building authorization and a license. And so also a really important uh, <laughs> responsibility for the seller. Uh, but for this reason, we suggest to uh, for for the buyer that they immediately seek advice at the beginning of the process otherwise they is um, yeah there will be possibly some there will be possible some issues yeah and anyway, i say um you you do probably um answer this as well my but i presume um when you you know find the right property the estate and may recommend a solicitor that you know they work with and the, perhaps the risk with that is the um, the guidance or the due diligence that that solicitor is doing on behalf of the estate agent or seller isn't the same. Mm. The estate agent, the estate agent does not recommend. The estate agent wants a proposal signed in Italy, and uh, the, the, because for for for, for the estate agents, they if the proposal is signed, is is like they already have uh, they already had their the agreement, they close the deal. And also, at the time, if the offer is accepted, the estate agent is entitled to get also the commission. Yeah. According to Italian law, but is for that reason of, because the estate agent want to sell the uh, want to sell the property, want to get the commission paid. Uh, for the reason we suggest to include uh, in the proposal, con uh, clause that carry out due diligence mm -hmm. and the contract become bi binding after all the checks. After the check, after positive outcome, the proposal became binding. It's a contract, so there is no risk after the due diligence for the seller, yeah. for the buyer. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Of course, I say the independent um, exactly. uh, is is so, so important. Um, advice, exactly. Yeah, exactly, exactly that. Um, you know, there's no sort of bias. In the, in the process um but yeah thanks very much uh, paul and you know hopefully that does answer your, your question and um yeah as i do get in touch with manlio after this um session uh, the next question manlio we've got quite a few here so i'll try and get through them uh, relatively quickly um but the next one's from, from claudia um she has asked how complicated it is um or recommended it is to consider to buy a property on auction or in auction in italy um, it's not so difficult to purchase another property through an auction in Italy. Uh, the process changed in the, in the last three years, basically. Also, possible to purchase property remotely. Uh, it's important to have an assistance because it, it's, everything is electronic. It's not possible from the, um, the possible buyer needs to have a uh, digital signature uh, identified through the court uh, so it's important if they live abroad to have some representative that assists through the process also because it's a legal process because there is also the uh, the trustee of the judge we will coordinate the the, the auction uh, there are also legal terms to respect uh, also review before submitting the offer uh, submitting the offer also review the deed also they carry out this due diligence, even if uh, there is also a surveyor appointed by the judge to verify the property. Okay. But it's not so difficult to purchase a property through an auction. Yeah, I, I think we've we've heard um, at your overseas home and obviously Manlio at Sea Legal of numerous clients going through auction in Italy. It is fairly safe if you're given, you know, the right um, guidance beforehand, just make sure you know exactly what you need to do and, you know, protecting yeah. yourself at all possible just um on one question Manlio, on that note i mean you mentioned there that um that there would need to be a physical presence on behalf of claudia at the auction is that correct excuse me would there need to be a physical uh, presence on behalf of claudia at the, at the auction or could you do it online no 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 if she has a representative she does need to attend to the auction okay. basically now mostly of 90% of the auction are um, remotely 
telematic through internet. Uh, mm-hmm. But if she would like to attend, she needs to have uh, a digital signature uh, 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 recognized by the digital platform of the tribunal of the Italian authorities. Is uh, for example, as, as lawyer, we have all the access to telematic uh, platform of, of all the courts in Italy. It's not it's not so quite complicated for, for us to attend to the to the auctions. Okay, all right, great, yeah, thanks, thanks, Milio. Um, the, the next one's come through from, from Patrick. I know at the beginning, Milio, you mentioned um, wills. Um, you know, really important part of people's journeys overseas is um, you know securing. Uh, and understanding the the impacts their wills from the UK may have in Italy. Um, Patrick has asked, would a UK will still be valid in Italy? Uh, this is depends uh, where the uh, where the um, the people who died will re- release a uh, will is resident in uh, is. The last uh, place of residency at the moment of the disease uh, could be valid. Could be valid, but also the heirs has to verify where uh, uh, also the applicable law of the the succession at the time of the uh, of the diet. Sure. Uh, so could, could be in theory could be valid. But it should be verified where also the uh, last place of residency, uh, for example, if uh, the residence is in Italy, there would be some uh, uh, some contrast between Italian law succession and the UK law succession. Mm-hmm. Could be some contrast. So we need to verify. But in theory, yes. In theory, UK will uh, is also valid. But we need to verify also the heirs have to verify the last place of residency in order if, because if there is, if we will the deceased people the person if died in Italy uh, for Italian for Italian law point of view is uh, Italian law will apply in theory it could be some uh, contrast with Italian law in the UK law yeah thanks Milio. so just in that would if if a client, you know, the, one of uh, our viewers was um, living in Italy full time, you know, 365 days a year, would you advise them creating or uh, an Italian will on the basis that that's, you know, where they reside? Yes, or seek advice through a lawyer or through a lawyer to verify if the will is applicable in Italy and uh, or for the asset based in Italy are, uh, is, they are val- is valid. Okay. All right. Brilliant. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah. Thanks, Patrick. And say, if you've got anything else, please, um, uh, you know, follow up with, with Manlio. Um, the next one uh, is from Paul. It's around the, the power of attorney document. Um, he asks, does a power of attorney document enable you to not be present when the sale is finalized with the notary? Exactly. Exactly. Power of attorney legalized with a postille or from a uh, format abroad with the right procedure. Uh, Enable to the uh, representative who is appointed on the power of attorney to sign all the notarial deeds and represent the principal in front of the notary. Okay, brilliant. That was a uh, yeah, nice, nice and easy question for you, Manlio. Um, and thanks, Paul. Uh, we we'll move on to, to Edmund, um, who is uh, just well looking and questioning uh, around citizenship. Um, so Edmund asks, my mother was born in, in Italy and is an Italian citizen. So I, I will I be able to get Italian citizenship? What are the residency requirements for my partner, who I presume is uh, British, Emilio? So yeah, would, would Edmund, because his mother is Italian, an Italian citizen, would he be applicable uh, to be given Italian citizenship if, if he were to move over? Um, in terms of competent authority to apply for the for the request of Italian citizenship, this is the request. Yeah, so I think it's the, the request is for himself and I believe his partner as well uh, to to um, apply for Italian citizenship. From what I understand. Okay, if she wants to know, if she doesn't want to know the authority uh, 
to apply is the Italian consulate to when where she resides. If uh, the applicant resides in, Lon in London, the competent authority would be the Italian consulate in London. Okay. Okay, but great. she has to review all the documents, get, them, get, get you, collect all the documents of the birth certificate of the mother, uh, uh, all the documents that, that can sh um, demonstrate the line, the blood, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, translate all the documents if they are also in English, uh, for example, from UK authority, because they need also have the birth certificate, etc. Uh, getting also a postille. Uh, review all the documentation. We recommend also that they will review also the documentation prior to sub submitting the application to the Italian consulate in order to avoid uh, any rejection mm -hmm. or any delay in requesting further documentation from the consulate uh, and uh, apply to the competent or the Italian consulate abroad where they reside. Also, they can, from a lot of US clients uh, apply uh, in Italy with another procedure because Italian consulate in the US are really uh, crowded, they are full of requests and there is a long, long list in order to apply. So they prefer uh, to apply in Italy, uh, in any municipality, they won't like to submit the application and they can rent out a, an apartment, a property uh, and stay in Italy for uh, for basically all the procedure, at mm -hmm. least uh, 60 days. And the procedure in Italy, in front of the municipality, will be uh, finalized in six months. Right. So it's uh, uh, quite easier uh, and faster. OK, brilliant. Um, Edwin, yeah, thanks for, for your question. Um, so it's interesting to hear as well that um, obviously documentation can be in, in different languages, so you've got to make sure that you know, what you're submitting is, is obviously correct um, to make sure there's no delays. Um, we've got a question here around, um, I suppose, running a, a business, so to speak, or an Airbnb um, from, from Pete. And he asks, in a region such as Puglia, is it possible to buy and restore a property and then stay on and run it as a B&B legally after Brexit? Uh, after uh, after Brexit, uh, they uh, she, she or he can stay in Italy uh, only for ninety days. Mm -hmm. After ninety days, uh, she has to find a visa <laughs> to stay longer than ninety days. Okay, so if if Peter, oh, sorry, Pete was. Um buying a property in Italy, um, let's say staying for 90 days and then, you know, perhaps renting out um, some rooms for, uh, you know, a bread and breakfast, would that be legal for him to do after Brexit? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah. There is no, if, if there is no restriction from the, some town hall, but we don't have any restriction at this time in Italy, such as is happening in New York, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. There is no, no 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 restriction at this time. Yeah, sure. Peter, say so, yeah. That's a, it's a good question, and uh, when it is up and running, do let me know because Puglia is a lovely, a lovely area of Italy. Um, I, I've got the next question uh, from Patrick um, here, Manlio. Um, he Patrick asks, can the offer be conditional, uh, be a conditional offer but still binding? Question mark. So if there are issues, the deposit is returned, or are you suggesting the due diligence is undertaken before any payment of deposit? Um, yes. Following on and leading on from the, the question from uh, beforehand. Absolutely, yes. The, the, uh, the offer can be conditional under the due diligence clause. Uh, basically, is like a reservation. Uh, the seller cannot sell the property to anyone else. Uh, the parties already agreed on the purchase price. Uh, uh, also, we recommend the deposit to be paid in escrow account, not to the state agents, not to the buyer for any reason. Uh, and after due diligence, after, notifica after notification of the positive outcome, 
uh, the contract will become binding, will become binding. Absolutely. Brilliant. Yeah, thanks. Um, they touch you again for the question. So it's a good question um, to ask. And I'm sure it may be um, a question that a few of the audience uh, were, were thinking about as well. Um, so um, hopefully that clears that part of uh, the contracts up. Uh, the next question, um, I suppose it's fairly um, generic, so to speak, my Leo, um, it's around the services that C Legal uh, actually offer. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. And uh, Darlene asks, um, do you provide full services uh, slash legal uh, to purchase modest small properties in, let's say, Sicily for non-Italian speaking buyers? Who can I contact Absolutely. and what is the fee structure? Uh, fee structure is depending on the assistance required. If we assist for the full process, uh, it is depending on, on the value of the property. Uh, if we are engaged for also for carry out, for example, due diligence and review the plenary contract or the purchase proposal is another offer, is another fee. So she uh, she can be in, she she can get in contact with us and we can discuss the service required and get a quotation. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. I think. Um... Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, and it's, um, it's something, Darlene, that is worthwhile getting and understanding um, how Manlio and his team can actually assist you, you know, as early in the process as possible. What we normally see at your overseas home is that the hardest part of the process is actually, you know, finding a property. Uh, and then once you find a property, things can move relatively quickly. Um, so, it's, you know, it's good to have you know, your ducks in a row so you can you know, take action and, and you're not caught out, um, you know, playing catch up. Um, but yeah, thanks, thanks for your question. And of course, we'll, we'll put you in touch with Manlio um, for your unique requirements after this session. Um, we've got loads of questions coming through, uh, Manlio. We are running out of time, but we'll try and get through to uh, a few more. Um, so um, we've got one here from uh, Anise. She asked, once purchased, is it possible to gift the property as a legacy? Or must any leg lost it? Must or must any legatee um, have to go through legal confirmation they are eligible to own it? So would um, Annalise, uh, once she's purchased property, be able to gift it um, to perhaps a family member or, or family friend as a legacy? Yes, absolutely. Yes, it's donation deed. It's possible to donate uh, after the ownership after she became an owner. To donate or have a gift to another person, it needs another public deed, but it's possible. Yes. Okay, brilliant. And and this is then um, followed up uh, around uh, uh, the lasting power of attorney. So she asked if um, a UK lasting power of attorney is uh, is valid over in Italy, um, both for finance and property and health and welfare, uh, or would they need to create a new power of attorney, lasting power of attorney in Italy? Uh, uh, we recommend to to prepare uh, a different power of attorney for for the different task. Yeah, yeah, I think, and as you say, when you're you know doing these uh, operating within the legal um, parameters of Italy, um, it's better to have uh, you know the lasting power of attorney from Italy, um, and Germany yeah, and, and the team can definitely help. Uh, with that, yes, we uh, we assist also a lot of clients in uh, draft the power, the valid power of attorney. Also, we send in UK, in the US, uh, for the task for the purpose that they need to appoint a legal representative. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, I know Manlio we has a couple of well, uh, a few clients recently that you, you've assisted uh, that from from your overseas home. So, Thea, thanks very much. To you and the team. Um, we'll go through now to um, to Paul um, Paul McGill, who's asked: Are there any grants or schemes available for a non-resident installing power and water to a building that's never had either? In brackets, Puglia. Um, so, would the government, you know, help out perhaps a grant or a scheme to build or install power and running water to to I suppose an old building or a restoration project over in Puglia? Uh, for, for 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 installing what I, I, I don't get the I believe the um I believe Paul um is looking perhaps to restore a property in Puglia um perhaps this property um doesn't have 
power uh, attached to it, also um, water, and he was looking to restore it and um, you know build the the, the water. Um, yes. Would you know that there, 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 there are no restrictions? Yes, there are no restrictions. We suggest you get in touch with the surveyor. Uh, you can file all the application, all the requests to the to the municipality, mm -hmm. uh, and or get in touch also with us in order to verify what she can build or she can restore, how the work can be carried out, uh, etc. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, I, I, I think. Um... It's a, it's, a, it's a really good question, um, Paul, and I, I wouldn't like to comment myself, but I think Mandio if you, it will have probably a better understanding of Puglia, but also, um, you know, may have um, a surveyor that could, you know, be, take you that much, that much further. Um, we've got um, one here um, from Catherine. Um, she asked if it's easier to buy a property in Italy with an Italian passport. So I hope it sounds like she's one of the lucky ones that have already got an Italian passport. But um, is it easier at all? Is it kind of the same process? The same process. Okay. The, the, the same process. The, possibly with Italian passport, possibly they can save uh, some uh, tax uh, at the moment of the purchasing. But the process is the same. Okay, brilliant. Nice, nice and easy, uh, Catherine. Um, so yeah, that's uh, hopefully answered your question. And then um, we've got another one from Patrick. And it actually, this is a question I've heard come up quite a lot. Um, it's around the notary. Um, it, the, the question is, does a notary have any legal qualifications um, at all? Yes. No. no. The notary. No, no. The notary has a really important role in the trans, uh, property tran transaction in Italy. His ultimate role is to receive the public deed and register the final deed in the land registry. At the moment of the closing, the final deed, he will check if the property has lien. But is is the last and ultimate role is to register the contract in the in the land registry. It's a crucial role in Italy for the notary. Mm -hmm. uh, is a neutral part of the transaction. He does not represent the buyer. He does not represent the seller. He represents the state, the government, in order to verify if the transaction has been completed according to the Italian law, if the payments came according to anti monetary law, etc. If the property is registered in the lender registry, but this is the check that is being, we complete also at the beginning of the flat process because the notary arrive at the end of the process after the, <laughs> the preliminary contract, after the proposal, after due diligence, after power of attorney, after the fees payment. Mm. So, but it's a crucial role. Is the last the ultimate role is to register the, the land, the, the, the final deed in the land registry. But this is an important role. It's totally different, the role of the notary in Italy than in the UK or in the US. Okay, great. Um, yeah, thanks, Pat Patrick. It's a really good um, question around the notary. Really? Yeah, really um, sound answer, Mandio. Thanks very much. Um, so we, we have unfortunately run out of time this afternoon, but thank you everyone for you know your, your questions. Um, I think you know, given what we've gone through today, you can understand the, the complexity of buying a property, you know, overseas, especially in a country perhaps where you haven't um, re you researched too much or you're the beginning of your search. And you're looking to understand the process. Um, so Manio, as I said before, has helped um, countless numbers of, of our clients on their their journeys of buying property and, and living overseas in Italy. Um, he's been an invaluable resource to them and, and helped them guide them through the process. So um, we will um, pass your details across to Manlio and this team at C Legal, um, and vice versa. So if you do like to reach out or would like to reach out to Manlio after this um, uh, session please feel free to do so. Um, I'm sure he'd be more than happy to help all of you with your, your questions and, and requirements. Um, and then finally, Manlio, thank you very much to, to you know, yourself. Um, as always, your, your knowledge and experience is uh, second to none and I uh, really appreciate everything that you, you do for our clients and today uh, in answering these questions. Um, we will be holding this session live on demand um, on our website. So, um, if anyone ha has missed out or um, if you perhaps have any family members or family friends that would like to um, view this um, uh, session,
please go across to, to your overseas home website. Um, and yeah, all the best with your, your search overseas in Italy. Thanks very much. And uh, Emilio, we'll, we'll speak soon. Thank you, Seb. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, Have a nice, yeah, nice evening. Thank you. Bye-bye.